Good evening. I'm like over here and it's just tools and the camera over here. So awkward, but that's okay. What's that, Michael? What? No, you count. It's just like, uh, and then, uh. I can't just like, you know, anyways. Hello, welcome. <laughs> uh, welcome to Faith. I'd like to welcome everybody in person and online. Uh, I am Pastor Claire Ackleow, pastor here at Faith Lutheran Church. Virtual worshipers, you can hopefully, Carrie, find the worship program online. Is that true? We don't know. Hopefully, you can find the worship program at flcjeff.org under the worship tab, although when it's not Sunday, sometimes we forget to upload it, so um, wing it. Um, also, we will be communing today, so go ahead and grab your communion elements if you haven't done so already. If you're joining us virtually, please take a moment to tell us who you are and where you're from by typing it into the chat. And let's see, here at Faith, we affirm God's promises to all of creation by welcoming all people, no matter their race, culture, economic status, age, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, and no matter where you are on your spiritual journey. All are invited to participate fully in the life of faith because we are all one in Christ Jesus. The children's sermon is early, so come back fast. Um, Carrie, do we have anyone joining us virtually at this point? Uh, like the grace. Some, of the grace. some of the grace. All right, welcome, some of the grace. Um, I'm glad you all are here today. Um, thank you for joining us. Let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. You may rise as you are able. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us a new and honest create in us new and honest hearts so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you the God of all mercy full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite the children to come forward for the children's message. So I guess that's just Gabe right now. go without Abby. She can join us in a minute. All right, so what is today? Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday, what else? Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day, yes. What are you dressed for? Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day, so you knew that answer, huh? Yeah. And Gabe, you look dashing in your, in your waistcoat, in your bow tie. So um, here she is. Hello, it's okay. I made my bow tie black just for that. You made your bow tie black just for Ash Wednesday? Yeah. That's very thoughtful. It's liturgically appropriate, yeah. Okay, so um, what are some ways that you can show someone that you love them? Um, giving them hugs. Giving them hugs? Making them Lego hearts. Making them Lego hearts? Um, help them. Help them, mm-hmm. What else, anything else? Um, give them chocolate. Give them chocolate? Um. Give them Legos? I'm sensing a theme. Get them. Okay, when you think of something, raise your hand and let us know. Yep. Give them Valentine's Day cards. Give them. Um, gifts. Valentine's Day cards and gifts. What about outside of Valentine's Day? Yes? Make them bracelets and necklace. Make them bracelets and necklace. That's a good idea, yeah. Show them the true spirit of Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, Gabe. Show them that you love them. Show them that you love them. Well, how? That's the question is how. Um, what are some things we can do? Can give them something. Give them something? Mm -hmm. That's okay. I'm almost getting my ears pierced. You're almost getting your ears pierced? Is, let's see. So permission from mom to get your ears pierced is probably an act of her loving you, do you think? Yeah? Okay. 
It's okay. Not everybody has their ears pierced. Okay, so these are all really good ways of showing people that you love them. Even, okay, so on Valentine's Day, right? Or even not on Valentine's Day, what? Cook a meal for them when they aren't able to. Cook a meal for them when they aren't able to, yeah? Um, help them do stuff if they can't do stuff. Help them do stuff if they can't do stuff, yeah? Help them when they're sick. Help them when they're sick, good. These are all really good ideas. Donate, donate money to them when they are poor. Gift them food. Gift them food. All right. Buy something for them. Buy something for them. This is really good. We're going to stop here. <laughs> all right. Okay. So these are all really good ways uh, that we can show people that we love them. And we can do it on Valentine's Day and we can do it all throughout the year, right? So God shows us that God loves us by, by how? You answered that question. How does God show us? Yeah. He gave his life. He gave his family and friends in our heart. Mm. Looks like you had some delicious snacks today. <laughs> that? No. Okay, what did you want to say? How does God show us that he loves us? Yeah. God sent... Notes to people. Notes Jesus. to people. Jesus. <laughs> God sent Jesus to do what? Die for to die for us, and then what happened? And save our sin. Yes, yeah, save us from, our save us from our sins. Yes, nice. I learned this from camp. You learned this from camp. That's good. Okay, so <laughs> he sent God sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, so that we can live in happiness and in love with one another. Right. So, because God did this great thing for us, it's our job to spread that happiness and love with other, uh, to other people, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. Tomorrow you're going to school and you're going to what? Have fun. Have fun? Okay, good. So while you're at school, and for the next 40 days, <laughs> um, all throughout the season of Lent, because Lent is 40 days long, right, not <laughs> counting Sundays, Inside Voices. Um, I want you, huh? Saturdays. It counts Saturdays, but not counting Sundays. So during these next 40 days during Lent, I want all of you to think of ways that you can show people that you love them, and I want you to do your best to do those things when you can, okay? And then what happens at the end of Lent? Um, we pray. We pray at the end of a children's oh. sermon. The big alleluia. Yeah, we did that last year. Should we do that again this year? Yes. Okay. All right. We'll bring out the little and the big hallelujah. Yeah. Um, um, so play. Easter eggs. What's, what's the th theological thing that happens in the Bible, the big God thing Jesus that happens? Comes back. From? Heaven. Yeah. From the dell. From, from the dell. From the dead. Yes. <laughs> All right, good. This has been a great talk. Are we? <laughs> yes, pray. Are you going to lead the prayer today? No, I don't know what I'm going to say. You don't know what to say? You just talk to God. Do you want to lead it? No? Okay, maybe one day I'll make you lead it. I won't make you. I'll ask you. All right. Yes? I got the idea of making Lego hearts and giving them to people. I made a deal. That is very thoughtful. I'm sure mom really appreciated the Lego heart. Yeah, All right. Mom made a house. <laughs> Are we ready to pray? Yes. Let us pray. That's very nice of her. Okay. <laughs> Good and gracious God. Thank you for children. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for their ideas and their thoughts and their comments and their love and their joy and just all the little things and... Um, thank you for allowing us to see the world through their eyes because, oh my gosh, it's such a blessing. Um, and it reminds us of all the love and, um, and grace and mercy that you've given to us. Um, please be with us this Lenten season and today on Ash Wednesday and help us to remember to um, draw closer to, to you and to look at our lives and see how we can um, better spread love and joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, a 
adults, don't we wish we had that much energy at 7 p.m. in the evening time? Goodness gracious. What joy. Um, our first lesson for today is from the book of Joel, and it's going to go a little differently than what's printed in your bulletins, but bear with me. We're going to read from the second chapter, verses 1 and 2, and verses 12 through 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and dark, thick darkness, like the blackness spread upon the mountains. A great and powerful army comes. Their life has never been from of old, nor will it be again after them in the ages to come. And now we'll switch over to verse 12. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Please uh, read with me the psalm for this evening. Um, it's Psalm 51, 1 through 17, and we'll read it responsively. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, your delight in truth deep within me and would have me know wisdom deep within. Let me hear joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. For you take no delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. Our second reading tonight comes from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. We entreat, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through our great endurance, 
in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. you are able. Return to the Lord your God, who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your righteousness before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, you have received their, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen by others, may not, I'm sorry, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also there your heart will be also. The gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance, dear beloved children of God, from God our Creator through the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is Ash Wednesday, which starts us off on our Lenten journey. Lent is a time of 40 days, Sundays excluded, in which we reflect on our lives, repent from our sins, and draw closer to God. In doing these things, we seek to emulate Jesus' sacrifice in the wilderness for 40 days as he fasted and withstood temptation from the tempter. It is a time of reflection that precedes that great moment of renewal, Easter Sunday. The traditional practice of giving something up for Lent started off as a means of self-discipline and spiritual purification to prepare us for that wonderful day of Jesus' eventual death and resurrection. In giving things up for Lent, we are ritually mimicking the fasting of Jesus in the wilderness and his practice of overcoming temptations that would have drawn him away from God. In more modern times, instead of giving something up for Lent, many people will add a spiritual practice to their daily lives. For example, daily prayer or daily Bible study or giving to the less fortunate. Through this spiritual practice, the purpose is to eliminate those things that take our focus off of God and to refocus our lives and our hearts on our relationship with God. Today's readings tell us where not to focus our energy and where we should be putting it. 
This is true for the entire church year, but especially during the season of Lent. The reading talks about giving, praying, and fasting. Us being humans, we tend to develop practices to honor God, but eventually we end up getting caught in the legality of the rule rather than the point of the spiritual practice itself. And that's exactly what happened in our text from Matthew for today. Jesus talks about the hypocrites who made a big deal out of giving and praying and fasting so that they can be praised by others and booster, bolster their reputation as righteous people of God. But righteousness isn't about obeying rules. It's not about moral perfection. Righteousness is about loving in a way that corresponds to God's love for us. It's about being in line with God's priorities, and in the context of the book of Matthew, God's priority is always mercy. In deciding what to do for Lent, we should ask ourselves, how are we going to live out God's priority of mercy in our lives? What are we going to do this season that will contribute to the, benef contribute to the benefit of others and will serve God? Our Lenten discipline should be something that initiates action on our part, action towards righteousness. But keep in mind that what we are hearing is coming from, uh, because keep in mind what we are hearing is coming to us from the Sermon on the Mount, just following the Beatitudes, where Jesus asks us to hunger and thirst for righteousness, for justice, equality, and mercy, and love for all. This is the catalyst for us to reevaluate our lives and reorient ourselves to align our wills with God's will for the sake of all people. So the most important thing to ask yourself and to remember during Lent is this. How does this practice bring me closer to God? And if you can't answer that question, there's not really a point in continuing that spiritual practice that you chose, and that's okay. Okay. So for example, say you decided to give up chocolate for Lent, heaven forbid, but two weeks in, you find that omitting chocolate from your diet has not brought you closer to God in any way. That's okay. And if that's the situation, then it's absolutely appropriate to sit down with a big bar of chocolate and be thankful, for God, thankful to God for it as you think about a different way to better connect with God and deepen that relationship. Essentially, your Lenten discipline should be a spiritual practice that allows you to show your love for yourself, for your community, and for God. And we do this because we know that God has the final say. We do this with full faith that this journey will lead us to the crucifixion on the cross, but also to rising on the third day. This is God's promise to us, and Lent is what it looks like for God to keep that promise to us. God sits with us today in the dirty ashes of our troubled lives. God remains alongside us as we hurt and grieve and struggle. God never promises to make our lives perfect, but God promises to always be there with us when we suffer. And in 40 days, excluding Sundays, God will be there to show God's ultimate majesty in the resurrection of our Lord and Messiah, Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.
can be seated. <laughs> Friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy and communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates, from God, separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the, dis to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our fault by our own thoughts, words, and actions, and that we have We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Our past unfaithfulness the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us, we confess to you. Our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Here is God. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life, through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to come forward, just like we do in communion, and I will... Judy Ashes.
I feel like a dog chasing its tail when I do that. Accomplish in us, O oh God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, through, through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. O Lord our God, you gather our church and call us to return to you. Accompany us throughout our Lenten pilgrimage. Create in us clean hearts and renew all the baptized to declare your praise. Most merciful God. Renew your creation, O God. Bring rains to parched places and heal lands affected by a changing climate that all inhabitants of the earth experience your abundance. Most merciful God. Renew the nations, O God. Give voice to those on the margins and resolve the world leaders who seek to protect those most vulnerable. Loosen the bonds of injustice and bring an end to all violence, oppression, and persecution. Merciful God. Renew your people, O God. Respond to those who cry out to you in secret or in seclusion. Equip us with compassion to care for those who experience homelessness, food insecurity, economic hardship, and illness, especially. Most merciful God. Renew this congregation, O oh God. Inspire our faith information ministries and those who teach and lead. Invigorate us with lifelong curiosity and wonder as we grow as your disciples. Merciful God. O oh Lord, our God, we give thanks for all your faithful ones of every time and place. Renew us by the example of our lives of prayer and service and at the last, bring us with them into your everlasting presence. Merciful God. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through your Savior, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that, renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Please not to Come to the banquet for all is now ready. Let us pray. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism so that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who reigns, lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
You may rise as you are able. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.